As I stand alone in the darkness, memories of him flood my mind. His memories hurt me with a sense of longing and despair. He was my first love, my only love, my true love. But now he is lost, I am lost, our love is lost. But there's a hope, deep in the cracks of my heart, that I will see him again. I always whisper his name into the darkness of the night. It gives a sense of peace to my soul, and a hope that he is there. It feels like, one day, he will hear my voice, and come out from the darkness and save me like he did. That cold winter night. Flashback. Ah, uh, leave me, I said. Let go of my hand. I pleaded with tears in my eyes. What makes you think that we will let you go? Hmm? One of them asked with a smirk. Please, let me go. I begged them, crying, but it was in vain. They grabbed me by my hair and started pulling me into their car. Leave the girl alone. A domineering voice echoed in the darkness. I saw a man dressed in all black walk out of the darkness. Boss? The man who was pulling me whispered in fear. His grip on my hair loosened. He and his gang bowed to the man with the domineering voice and walked away, leaving me alone. I started trembling with fear. As I saw the man walk closer to me, he took off his jacket and gently wrapped it around me. Fix yourself and go home, the man said in his domineering voice. I felt shiver down my spine as I heard his cold, ruthless voice. I quickly got up and tried to walk, but my ankle was sprained. Looks like you can't go home. Okay, that's my club over there, you can wait. He offered. No, no. I am completely fine, I will manage. I said, trying to get up, but I fell back. If you want, you can keep sitting here, but I won't come again if someone drags you to their car. He said sternly, with no emotions, and began to walk away. Okay, okay, I will come with you. I said, with a trembling voice, trying to get up on my feet. Hearing me, he stopped and looked at me for a moment. He then helped me walk to his club. I didn't know a thing about him, but there I was, walking into a random club holding his hand. His personality screams out loud that he is a big red flag, but there's something in his eyes that makes me feel safe and secure. His presence is both terrifying and captivating. At his club, he asked his staff to aid my sprained ankle and then booked me a taxi home. And that's how unreal our first encounter was. When I lost all hopes, he appeared like a guardian angel and saved me from the clutches of danger. Our second encounter was a month later at the coffee shop where I worked part-time to support myself. May I take your order, sir? I asked. Get us a cappuccino, he said, without even looking at me. Sure, sir, I said, and walked away. Did he not recognize me? I wondered, sadly as I walked away. I served him the coffee, he ordered, but he never noticed me. He sat at my café for about an hour, but never noticed me. When it was time for leaving, he called for the bill. Sir, your bill is already paid, I informed him. What do you mean? He asked in his stern voice, raising his head. His facial expressions changed when he saw me standing there. That night you saved me, so I paid your bills as a token of gratitude, I said. A strange smile appeared on his face. Do you even know who you are talking to? He asked with that strange smile. Are you not the one you saved me that night? I asked, confused. Um, I am the one who saved you. But, okay, thank you for paying my bills. He said with a beautiful smile and walked out. I have never seen him smile before, and I just realized how handsome he looks when he smiles. There's definitely something about him that just makes my heart beat like crazy. After that day, he started visiting my cafe regularly. Over the days, we started talking and spending time together. It did not take us long to become friends. No, what we became was much more than just friends. I still remember that rainy day. It was our first date. We were at a resort enjoying the rain when there was a loud sound and the pot 
just beside Jungkook, broke into pieces. Before I could understand what happened, I saw Jungkook pull out a gun from his pocket. You stay inside, he said, pushing me into the room. I saw Jungkook firing like a trained shooter. There was no way he was doing it for the first time. I am the daughter of the chief police, and I can say that all that was happening was not legal. I was shivering like a leaf. The man that I had feelings for was involved in illegal business. I felt betrayed and cheated. I could no longer stay with him, so I immediately packed my stuff and returned home. At home, I could not keep myself away from Jungkook's thoughts. I was very mad at him, but I could not keep myself away from worrying about him. They were shooting bullets at him. What if he gets hurt? What if he needs help? I should have stayed there. Is he okay? I thought, worried. I should call him. I thought picking up my phone. Just then I heard a knock on my door. For some reason, I knew it was Jungkook. So I immediately ran and opened the door. Ah, Win, Are you okay? He asked, checking me out. Hmm, I am good, but are you okay? I asked, gently touching his brucid forehead. I am fine. It was nothing. He said. He was breathing hard and I could see worry in his eyes. I told you to stay inside. Why did you leave the house? He asked, pulling me into a hug. I could hear his heartbeat. They were fast like hell. I was very angry at him. I wanted to break all the ties with him. He was involved in illegal things. He was completely wrong for me. But the moment he hugged me, I could say that no matter what, he loved me just as much as I loved him. Holding me tight in his embrace, he told me about his secret identity and his mafia family that has been ruling the country since ages. I could not move an inch hearing his family status. The man for whom I had feelings was the biggest name in the underworld. Are you okay? He asked, noticing my discomfort. His voice sent shivers down my spine. I nodded with fear. You don't need to be scared of me. I won't ever hurt you. Nor would I let anyone else hurt you. I won't ever force you for anything. If you tell me to leave, I will leave at once. He said, breaking the hug. There was honesty and assurance in his voice. I was supposed to say him goodbye and close the doors of my heart and house forever for him, but I was unable to tear my gaze away from him. There was something magnetic about him, something that drew me in despite the danger. I love you, I whispered, with my voice barely above a trembling breath. He looked at me for a moment and then gently kissed me. There was no turning back now. I never ever imagined my life would intersect with someone like him. He, Jungkook, was the leader of the country's most powerful mafia. Our worlds were supposed to be worlds apart, but fate had other plans. As days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, our love grew stronger and stronger. Without me realizing, he was becoming an inseparable part of my life. But I could not ever introduce him to my dad. My dad is the most honest police officer of the department. He does not hesitate to risk his life for justice. He would never understand my love, my forbidden love. Thoughts of my dad not accepting our love has always haunted me. Our secret meetings became a lifeline in the midst of chaos. Each stolen moment was filled with forbidden desires and unspoken promises. You shouldn't be here. My dad won't hesitate to shoot you if he sees you. I whispered one night as we stood together, hidden from the prying eyes of the world. Jungkook's eyes bore into mine. His gaze was intense and unwavering. Don't worry about me. Bullets don't kill me, he said softly. The confidence in his eyes and the aura of his voice sent a shiver down my spine. In that moment, I was bound to him by body and soul, in a love that defied all logic and reason. Despite all the unfavorable conditions, our love kept blooming with each passing day. 
things started changing for the better. Jungkook, who once did not care for anything but himself, who was cold, violent, and ruthless, has now become charming, generous, protective, and caring. He was born in a world of power, danger, and betray. He was taught to be bitter. But somewhere within the rough and tough covering was someone gentle with humanity. But our happiness was short-lived. I was in my beautiful bridal gown, all set to get married in secret and begin a new life with Jungkook. But just few minutes before our wedding, Jungkook received a call that changed everything. I am so sorry, Yen, but I have to go. He told me, in voice heavy, with regret. There's something I need to take care of. He added, I begged him to stay, to forget whatever it was that called him away. But he kissed me goodbye and promised that he would return soon. I waited two days in my bridal gown, but he never returned. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and still, Jungkook remained missing. I tried calling him, but we could not get in touch. Then one day, I learned the horrifying truth, that he was arrested by my own father. He wanted to not harm to my father, so he surrendered to him. He who never hesitated to smash someone who dared to touch him, accepted to bear torture in the jail. He let all his mafia business and weapons get seized. The thought that he gave up on everything for me made my world crumble around me. The pain was unbearable, like a raw, gaping wound that refused to heal. I now no longer wanted to hide my love so I confessed that I loved Young Cook in front of my dad and begged to help him free with every fiber of my being. But there was nothing dad could do against the law. Also, there was nothing I could do but hope against hope that he would come back to me. Through deep down, I knew the truth. He was gone, taken from me by forces beyond our control. It's been seven years without him. My heart never healed from the pain of losing him. I am now a well-established songwriter. I have written several love songs. These love songs help me keep his memories fresh in my head. I often visit places where we spent time together. It just gives me peace and direction. As I sit alone, his presence lingers around me and inspires me to write the love we once shared. Today, I am here at the club which Jungkook once owned. It was this place where we first met. I sat there for some time, reliving the memories we made. After my work, as I was leaving, I felt two hands grab me from behind. Ah, uh, leave me, I said. Let go of my hand, I shouted. What makes you think that I will let you go? Hmm? The man asked with a smirk, grabbed me by my hair, and started pulling me into his car. I screamed and struggled to free myself, but I failed. I lost all hopes. Leave the girl alone. A familiar domineering voice echoed from the darkness. Do you believe in circle of life? I never did until today. I saw a young cook dressed in all black walk out of the dark. Boss? The man who was pulling me whispered in fear. His grip on my hair loosened. He bowed to Jungkook and ran away for his life, leaving me on the ground. Didn't you promise you would return soon? I asked with my trembling voice. I am sorry for making you wait. He said and hugged me tight. This was a one-shot FF. Hope you liked it. 
Thank you for watching. Turn on the notifications for more such Jungkook's fan fiction. Hope you have a good day ahead. See ya. Take care.